You longtime subscribers to The Social Regressive know that I'm always on the lookout for scopes that have Horus reticles, especially the Tremor 3 or the Tremor 5. And let me just go ahead and get this out of the way so you can understand why I'm so crazy about these. Uh, the Tremor 3 and the Tremor 5 have a whole lot of data for making really precise shots without ever having to take your eye out of the scope. That's the big deal. Uh, with the old H59, which had just you know a huge Christmas tree, you could make all kinds of shots and never had to dial for anything. The only thing you may have to do is just roll parallax. But it makes it even better with the Tremor 3 and the Tremor 5. If you can estimate what your average wind is as you make your shot, you can use the wind dots that you see coming out at kind of this chevron at these angles. You can use these as long as you know your drop. All you have to do is estimate the wind. Each of those wind dots is going to have a mile per hour value. You hold off that and then click. You make it happen. I've tested three or four different scopes that have these reticles so far, okay, and you guys have right seen the results. The they are just phenomenal. I love the Tremor 3 and the Tremor 5. And what you're looking at right here is the newest offering with one of these. This is the ZeroTech Trace Advance. This is coming from Australia, but it's being made in Japan now. Before their scopes, like all the other scopes in their lineup are made in China, this is their first Japanese scope and it is gorgeous. It is a thing of beauty. Everything about this, as you would expect from a Japanese scope, is just pristine. Everything is smooth. All the controls feel good. Uh, turrets are tracking really, really well. As you would expect, the image is sharp, it's bright, it's clear, good contrast, edge to edge. It is gorgeous. And let's just go ahead and break this down a little bit. All right, this is a 30 millimeter tube scope. So this is not going to be as big and heavy as a lot of the giant tactical scopes that you're gonna run across nowadays. Um, yeah, it's, it's just gonna be a little bit more portable, easier to take out in the field. At 27 ounces, this is still a relatively heavy, you know, prone type of scope. If you're gonna take this out in the woods, just be prepared, you're gonna have some way to support this. You're gonna to wanna to use a monopod, bipod, tripod, you know, bags, sticks, whatever. You're gonna use something to take up the weight of the rifle. And as you can see, you know, especially coupled with a rifle like this, yeah, I'm not gonna be taking any offhand shots. But yeah, for a tactical scope, it is lighter weight. This is a four to 24 by 50 millimeter scope scope. So it has a pretty big objective lens out on this end and has a very wide zoom ratio, a 6x zoom ratio. You guys that are used to the 6 to 24s like the Match Pro or gosh, everybody makes a 6 to 24 nowadays. Uh, that's a very usable range for especially like varminting and you know coyotes, uh, things that are going to be a little bit smaller and a little bit farther away. Great for competitions as well, but this is more flexible because it goes all the way down to that 4x. It's nice to have that extra zoom ratio. And that, coupled with an FFP reticle, is just perfect. A 6x zoom ratio is pretty much what you're after. When you're getting up into 8x and 10x, you have the opportunity for that reticle to get so small that you can't really see anything anymore. And then when you zoom all the way in, it might be really thick <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, just kind of difficult to see your targets through. But this one maintains just kind of a good size to that reticle, and you can use it at whatever uh, zoom factor that you're on, whatever magnification. What this adds up to is a scope that's just more flexible than a bunch of the others. This is one that you can, yes, you can take those really precise shots at long distances up at 24x or one of the other higher magnifications, but when you dial this back to 4x, it becomes more of a close range, medium game kind of scope. 4X is not that far off the 3X that we expect for, you know, like deer hunters and things. So you're gonna be able to get a pretty good field of view, be able to see lots of animals. Uh, if you wanna be able to see like a whole pack, see a whole herd, that kind of thing, you can back off just a little bit more. And that's what's gonna make this a bit more functional than some of the other higher power scopes. Aiding that flexibility, we have actually a really wide range of parallax adjustment. All the controls on this are just fabulous, being made in Japan and made very well uh, to zero tech standards. Hey, hush. The Chinese scopes that they had felt really good too, and a lot of their controls were great. Uh, but being Japanese, yeah, this one's even better. Uh, this is just perfectly smooth. 
this feels really, really nice. And that applies to the side parallax as well. This is wonderfully smooth. One of the things that I look for in a precision scope is I want it to have controls that are not so loose that they easily turn when they're bumped or scuffed or whatever. But I also want them to be easy enough to turn that it's not going to move the, the rifle around. And I think this one strikes a pretty good balance. I think the zoom ring, this one, I'd have to kind of keep uh, track of. This one might move the rifle around a little bit, but the side parallax adjustment, now nah, this one's pretty darn good. The parallax adjustment turns all the way down to 20 meters. So adding to that flexibility, if you wanna take this scope and drop it on top of a rimfire rifle or be able to deal with really close range targets, no problem, you got it. As you might expect from a premium rifle scope, this has just pristine turrets. These track perfectly. And we were able to put this to the test out in the field. Some of us used the reticle in order to make our longer shots. Some of us used uh, just the turrets. And it doesn't matter what you do, you can choose either one and it's gonna work just fine. These turrets, both the elevation and the windage, track perfectly. Now listen to this. Oh my gosh, that sounds great, it feels great. I would be able to use this with gloves and you can hear that click when it hits the zero stop. It is just dead on. Everything about this just notches right into place. There's no slop, there's no float on the, uh, the turrets. And this does have graduations on the elevation. So as you turn, it'll actually track up and you can start to uh, track along with the graduations there so you can see how far you've turned. And yeah, that zero stop, ah, there it is. Yeah, it works great and it's easy to use. Out in the field, when we got this all set up, it, it took just a few shots for us to get zeroed with this. And then setting up the, uh, the disc type zero stop on the inside was really easy. You just use the included um, Allen key inside here, remove the set screws, pop this off. You can just set zero if you want, but in this case, we, uh, we got into the disc, dropped it down, and it has a couple pins that notch into each other. And one of the great things about this is, I know some of you guys ask, is um, you know, can you make this not just a zero, but can you maybe make this a negative one milliradian so you can deal with um, like maybe close up shots? And yes, you can. You can set this to be exactly wherever you want. It doesn't have to be your zero. You can move it back a little bit if you like. One thing that I should point out with the elevation is you don't get much adjustment. This is a 30 millimeter tube. I'm sure it has you know, nice big lenses and things to help create the beautiful image on the inside. So you get 23 milliradians of travel up and down. That is fine. This scope is one that's designed to be used really without uh, using the, the turrets for much. This is supposed to be a DMR style of scope where you use that reticle that's zeroed at 100 yards One, and then you're going to hold up three. for your elevation and then use the appropriate wind dot to make the shot. And if you do that, it really is magic. Any of the scopes that have the Horus Tremor 3 or Tremor 5, you are dealing with magic. It's just awesome. Now, for a little bit of strangeness with the windage turret, you'll notice that it's capped. That's odd for a tactical scope, but it makes absolute sense. Like I mentioned, this is one that you're not designed really to you know, dial out in the field. You're supposed to be using that reticle the way it was designed. You absolutely can because this windage turret under its cap feels and sounds every bit as good as the elevation. Listen to this. Oh man, that just clicks so tightly into place. Hopefully you can hear it over the cicadas out there. Yeah, that is fantastic. Now I should point out that this particular model you see right here has a Tremor 3 reticle, but there is one other option for about, I think it's 400, 500 bucks less. Uh, you can actually pick up this exact same scope with its same image quality, and you can use the ZeroTech RMG reticle. So if you prefer kind of a simpler, cleaner Christmas tree that doesn't have all the windage dots and all that just kind of stuff in it, I think you'll really like it. Uh, this is one that has just a little bit more precision to it. The lines are a little bit thinner. And um, yeah, I know a lot of you guys really like to reduce some of the clutter and just have very precise aiming points. And you may like that. But what was this actually like out in the field? Uh, we kind of talked about this afterward in the previous video, and I'll put a link to it up here. But this was 100% effective. The only shot that any of us missed was the first shot that I took because I didn't hold over 
enough to be able to make my shot. I forgot and I just kind of uh, zeroed my scope and aimed at my uh, 200 yard chicken. Aside from that, we didn't just hit the targets, we hit them very squarely. And so this is one that I think any of us would be perfectly happy to take out into the brush to deal with. Uh, coyotes, maybe some longer range hogs, varmints would be a lot of fun with this one. Um, okay, so we had tons of resolution coming in through these lenses. The mirage that we could see through here was almost as sharp as a Leupold Mark V, uh, which to me is kind of the gold standard for how a scope should look. I've looked through a whole bunch of uh, really nice scopes, but I love the Mark V. Tons of resolution in that thing, lots of you know great color, uh, excellent contrast, and this is almost there. It's just missing a little bit of that resolution. It's but it still has that kind of eerie quality where it just feels like you're looking at things and you're not looking through a whole bunch of lenses. That image holds up edge to edge. It's bright edge to edge. It sucks in a lot of light through that 50 millimeter objective. There's no color cast. There's just nothing odd about it. Again, it just feels like you're bringing things closer to you. The eye relief back here is 3.6 inches. That's gonna be fine for even your magnums. Just make sure that you're braced up properly if you're using something big. This is a scope that should be able to take whatever recoil you can throw at it. You could mount this onto, oh, I don't know, a 50 BMG, a 338 Lapua Magnum. It should have no difficulty with that. But again, yeah, with that 3.6 inches of eye relief, just make sure that you're you know, kind of squarely behind it with that. Center fire, um, you know, kind of short action like we were That's here with 6.5 Creedmoor, we didn't even have to think about it. The one thing that I will point out though is that it's higher magnifications, like up at 24X, it's a pretty tight eye box and all of us agreed on that. It's not the easiest scope to get behind when you're at those higher magnifications. Uh, scopes like the Bushnell Match Pro are a little bit more forgiving in that area, but um, yeah, this one's just a little bit tight. You can always back off the magnification if you want to make things a bit easier for that. I just wanted to let you know that that was there. All right, let's talk about the toughness of the scope overall. Under these flip caps on the lenses, we have their weather shield coating and all of the zero techs, uh, whatever coatings that they have on these, the fully multi-coated lenses, it's really good stuff. Uh, the weather shield goes beyond just making a really pretty image that reduces a lot of internal reflections and other uh, oddities. Um, it does repel a lot of the, um, the kind of muck and fingerprints and oils and solvents that you're going to run into in the real world with a scope. Uh, if I were to take my finger, and I know it's going to hurt you guys, but if I press it on the lens, this shouldn't cause any damage over time, you know, and this should just wipe off really easily. You can think of this a lot like the exo barrier that comes on Bushnell scopes, and you know that I've raved about that. Um, the exo barrier really works. The scope overall is waterproof to an unspecified amount. I would expect that this would probably hang out somewhere in the IPX7 sort of region. Uh, Zero Tech scopes are really made to uh, beat on pretty well. The scope itself is argon purged, as you expect from a higher end scope. And let's talk about some of the, uh, the goodies that are thrown in here. You can see some of them already. Uh, one of the things that helps to give this a little bit more value for its money, which is quite high, and we'll talk about that here in a second, but um, you do get a lot of extra goodies in this box. Uh, first off, you can see the Tenebrex covers right here, or Tenebri, um, and these by themselves are usually pretty darn expensive. Um, these are not just tough, but these are ones that help to get your scope a little bit lower. If you get like Butler Creek caps or others that fit over the objective lens, then you're not going to get, it's going to take up some of that space that you could use to get the scope down low. This is sitting in just cheap Weaver 30 millimeter um, skeletonized Picatinny rings. Love them. I've used these on many, many scopes over the years. And uh, yeah, these are just a great bang for the buck. I highly recommend them. This is like 25 bucks worth of ring with a you know a high price scope sitting in the middle of it but yeah with those rings we can get this awfully close down to the bore and again without anything sitting over the objective yeah we can move that as we will one of the other goodies you've already seen and that is the zoom uh, knob right here it's just a little nubbin very small and that's great uh, it gives just enough purchase you can grab it with a finger and you can twist this just a little bit more quickly you also get a sunshade in the box, which is great value for money. 
a lot of the higher end scopes, you would think that they would throw these things in, but no, you gotta go crawling back to the company and then you gotta pay for a tube of aluminum and you have to pay for the shipping that goes along with it. And so that's quite a hit that you can take with some of these. So it's nice to have that thrown in. Some of the other goodies, you get an entire scope cover. This is a, a neoprene thing that's gonna help to keep your scope in good shape when you're out in the brush. And then you get uh, the usual manual lens cleaning cloth and a couple tools uh, for adjusting the, the turrets and some of the other uh, things in there. Keep these extra goodies in mind as I quote you the price on this scope. This is a $2,100 scope. It used to be $2,400 when it first came out and they dropped it $300 pretty fast. But if you go on Optics Planet right now, $2,099. And that's for the scope, the flip caps, you know, the sunshade, all the goodies that we saw in the box. It's going to include all of that. And that's what's going to give it a little bit of an edge when it comes to its competition. If you're looking at some of the others, like uh, the Leupold Mark V that I mentioned, uh, you have some Burris options. One of the things you can look at is what do they actually include in the box? How much am I gonna have to spend on top of its 2000 plus price tag? in order to you know get it a little bit more uh, stable out in the wilderness you know so it can handle a little bit more rough stuff things like flip caps or the sunshade for when the sun gets difficult yeah it's going to start stacking up a little bit the price doesn't just end with buying the scope either because you have to remember that if you're buying one of these scopes that has a 34 or 35 millimeter tube you're having to probably buy some pretty expensive rings and if you want to put a bubble level or any other accessories on the scope it's going to be more expensive as well. You're typically not paying the same kind of money for a 34 millimeter uh, bubble level as you are for a 30. The 30 millimeter market is just saturated. There is so much great stuff. If you want to have rings for a bolt action like this, and then you wanna be able to drop it on an AR as well, so you pick up a mount for that, there are just tons of those, really good ones too. I've tested Athlons, Weavers, uh, there's Warn, and you can get those that have you know compensation built in, so you can take some of the longer shots, and it's just so much easier to do with a 30 millimeter system. Like I mentioned, and these Weaver rings are only 25 bucks for a pair. And I got no problem with that. I got no problem dropping a $2,000 plus scope into these because they really are quite good. I like these quite a bit. And I'll put a link down below if you wanna pick up some of these for whatever scope you have. Price aside, there are some other elements that help it compete against the other American options that you're gonna see. Uh, first off, it's gonna have kind of a smaller size and a lighter weight overall. It's gonna be less of a you know gigantic sniper range sort of scope. You can start to use this for real field work. So if you wanna go out and use this as a varminter, if you want to be able to pack this around and use it for you know coyotes or whatever, uh, this is just gonna be a little bit easier to deal with because of its smaller size. It doesn't have a gigantic 56 millimeter objective out here. It has the same sort of high resolution image with good color, and it has the same kind of clicks and other superlatives that you can have on a scope like this. And it's just gonna do it in kind of a smaller, lighter package. So this one I think is one that you would find yourself using in realistic situations a bit more. It depends on you, you know, maybe you don't mind dragging out some big stuff, but uh, I just think this would be a little bit easier to pack up and go with. There is one market that I think is going to very solidly be looking at this scope. If you live in Australia, New Zealand, if you live in Great Britain, you know, Ireland, Scotland, if you are in Canada, one of those countries where they have just a little bit freer trade than they do at the US, a lot of the time if we're gonna send like a loophole or a Trigicon scope over to those guys, they have all kinds of tariffs and sin taxes and all kinds of things coming in. They don't want those American scopes. And so it ends up costing a whole bunch. So for example, in Australia, if you wanted to get a loophole Mark V, 5 to 25, it's gonna cost you about 4,500 Australian dollars. This, on the other hand, in Australia, since it's not an imported product, is going to cost you 3,000 or over time, possibly even less. So this is really gonna be the first stop for a lot of you guys. With an image quality that is almost as good as that Mark V, and with just some of the extra goodies that this has on here, I think this is going to be really a winning formula for a lot of you guys that are outside of the United States. Inside the United States, I still think this is a really good option to take a look at. Uh, it really is beautiful. And as you saw in our own test, you know, we were just nailing targets at all those different distances really easily. And I think especially as the wind picks up, this is gonna be something that's going to function really well. 
Now for that price, you get an unconditional warranty. Uh, you can talk with them and see what that includes. You know, if it's you running it over with your car or, uh, you know, if it is just failures of the mechanicals. Unconditional sounds like you could run it over with your car, but uh, yeah, you should check with them beforehand and see. Thanks a bunch for watching. If anyone has any questions about the scope, please put them in the comments down below. We had us three shooters, and then we also have Gun Toten Minnesotan. Um, Minnesotan? Anyway, I'm going to put a link to his video up here. He reviewed this same scope, I think about a month ago. Uh, he really liked it, and he was able to get to some longer distances than we were able to. And uh, so he can probably chime in on this as well. So yeah, check out his video. And actually subscribe to his channel, because he's really on the way up. He's doing some really good reviews. He's getting into some uh, great uh, material, you know, some good rifles, good scopes. And uh, I really like what he has to say, so you should check him out. But yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.